Okay, we're finally back on the ship. Commander, you've received a new message at your private terminal. Okay, sounds good, but we also got a lot of upgrades here. Let's see, let's see. The biotic slam would probably be better for me than the grenade. Oh, metagel capacity. Thank you. Hard shields. Shields take 20% less damage. Great. Assault rifle accuracy. Your entire squad's assault rifles are now much more accurate. <laughs> That's kind of vague. There's a smart targeting module. Calculating and compensating for minute barrel movements. And then submachine gun damage. 50% plus. Amazing. So I think we have enough Ezo to just randomly do this because probably we're never going to finish using any of it. Oh. No? What? I thought we had... No. Did I not understand this? Oh, I just wasted that for no reason. Shoot, I really used it. Oh, what? Obtaining more loyal squad members will increase the number of powers available for Shepard. Oh, maybe it's because Miranda doesn't have any points in it yet? Is that the problem? Oh, I just wasted 5,000 Ezo. What a, what a waste. Eh, okay, well, I'll come back later on then. For now, that is it. What's the message I got? Samara wants a moment with you, Commander. Of course. Of course. Still alive. From Detective Anaya. Greetings, Commander. I'm not completely sure this will get to you, but thanks again for helping me deal with Samara. The Eclipse mercs have gotten real quiet around here, and my superiors have backed off too. No idea if the two are related, but hopefully the next time I meet a Justicar, I can give her the respect she deserves. I still can't believe I worked the case with one of them. You're a lucky human. If I find any more data on her target, I'll pass it along. Thanks, Detective Anaya. Sounds good. She got for me, Samara. I am glad you came. I must ask for your help. That is not easy for me. It's all right. Just tell me what you need. When we met on Ilium, I told you about a very dangerous person I was pursuing. Using the information you obtained, I have located her. She's been going by the name Morinth. I would like to apprehend her before she disappears again. She changes names? Didn't you say you'd pick up her trail after our mission? I know where she is, right now. In a month, she may be gone. This is the best opportunity I've ever had. Where is she? Omega. A oh. nightclub called Afterlife, which seems a perfect place for her to hunt. Guessing you're not interested in taking her back to jail, then. How important is this? Killing her has been my focus for 400 years. It is the most important thing in my life, and the reason I became a Justicar. Oh, that's long. That's like half of a Asari's normal lifespan. So they've known each other for a long time too. Tell me about her. She is an Ardot Yakshi. It is a term from a dead Asari dialect. It means demon of the night winds, but that is mythology. She is simply a very dangerous woman who kills without mercy. So is an Ardot Yakshi a special kind of murderer? Morinth suffers a rare genetic disorder. When she mates with you, there is no gentle melding of nervous systems. She overpowers yours, burns it out, hemorrhages your brain. You end up a mindless shell, and soon after, you are dead. Oh, so that's how she kills people. She doesn't kill people like you and I kill people. Why isn't this ever mentioned in Asari literature or art? When we were primitive, there was much fascination with Ardot Yakshi. Some cultures worshipped them as gods of destruction. Now the Asari have a place in the galaxy, and they don't wish this defect to be widely known. As far as I know, only three exist today. Two chose a life of seclusion. The third ran. Morinth. She ran. 
and I am sworn to kill her. The way you make it sound... Well, the two are living in seclusion right now, but do they really have to? Because all they would have to do is not mate with anybody. Isn't that enough? No? I don't know that I blame her for running. When she fled, she proved her addiction. She was not taking a great moral stand. She simply wants to keep killing. She is a tragic figure, but not a sympathetic one. So you hunt down these Asari just because they're born with a genetic condition? It manifests with maturity. When one is diagnosed, she is offered the chance to live in seclusion and comfort. If she refuses, it shows her addiction to the ecstasy she gets from killing her mates. There is no redemption for such a person. Oh, so maybe there's a... Hmm, there's an ecstasy component to this. She feels good killing people, and that's just... They have to choose between prison and death. It is an addictive condition. Remember how adaptive we are. If Morant does not want to be cured, she won't be. The other two live in seclusion, maybe because I feel like for Asari, reproduction and getting to know other people, other species is like a big focus of their entire culture. So to, to them, not being able to mate with somebody, not being able to fall in love, because that would probably eventually lead to mating, that's a very, very tragic thing. Did I do this one? Can't she abstain? Each encounter gives her strength. The effect is narcotic. The more she does it, the more she needs to do it. She will never stop. She can't. This is definitely worthy of your full attention. She confuses her victims, twists their feelings. They will do anything for her favor. Because she's so compelling or something about being an Ardat Yakshi? We need to stop her. Thank you, Commander. There are no words to express what this means to me. There is one thing more. This creature, this monster. She is my daughter. Oh, wow. And she's the reason you became a Justicar, because you feel like you have to... You have to right this wrong. Oh. You said this is genetic. How many children do you have? Three. And three Ardat Yakshi are in existence today. Oh my god. It is as it sounds. Marinth was always the wild one. She was happy and free, but selfish. What about you yourself? Who did you mate with? How did. Oh, Samara. Suddenly it feels like it's very understandable why she had to become a Justicar, because you feel like you're releasing so much wrong in the world. If we take Ardat Yakshi to be like. A wrong thing, which I feel like in the Sari culture it definitely is. Is it is it their fault for being born like this? No, absolutely not. But we're all dealt different hands, I guess, and it really depends on how you deal with it. The other two are secluded. This one is enjoying it. I cannot imagine what this is like for you. I do not want pity, Shepard. I do not accept it. My daughter's condition is my fault, and my redemption lies in killing her. Do not pity me. Simply understand my situation. How did all this happen? I spent my youth on the move, adventuring. I killed people, mated with them, or just danced the night away. I learned so much, experienced so much, and then my matron days came. I could finally sit back, bask, and enjoy my family. But in one moment, it was all taken away. Sounds terrible. I sat in a med lab while a nearsighted doctor droned at me, and I learned that nothing was as I thought it would be. I gave up all that I possessed. I owe nothing, claim nothing. All my knowledge will die with me. Now my purpose is to destroy my own children. Oh no. How could it be possible that all the Ardat Yashi in existence are all Samara's children, though? She must feel like she can't have children ever again, because something is wrong with her. But Samara herself is not one. No. Those moments change you. And I've hundreds of years left to live with that. I say too much. Forgive me. Help me find my long-lost daughter. And kill her. We'll go find Morinth. No promises on killing her. 
Although I feel like 99.9% .9 we are gonna kill her because that's what... That's what Samara wants. Someone like Miranda might hesitate in killing the cat, but I'm pretty sure Samara wouldn't hesitate. Man, that's heavy. As a human, as someone with a shorter lifespan of like maybe, I think it's 150 years in Mass Effect, sometimes you look at an Asari and it's like, oh, I'm, I'm so envious that you get to live for so long. But if you have a life like Samara's where you initially had all this joy of all your children being born, but then all of them are cursed with this genetic condition, and now you're even at the point where you have to hunt her down personally and kill her. Maybe 150 years of life is enough. Oh, that's heavy. Uh, Arda Yakshi, right? Arda Yakshi, Demon of the Night Winds, are Asari suffering from a genetic disorder, preventing conventional melding of nervous systems during mating. Instead, Arda Yakshi electrochemically ravage their partner's nervous systems, in extreme cases, leaving victims as vegetative invalids or corpses. Asari psychologists regard this incapacity for mental fusion as preventing the development of empathy. Oh, leading to psychopathy. There is no known cure. Uh, so it's not just this genetic condition that kills people, but because something is wrong, that same wrongness is also responsible for them not having empathy. The disorder generally begins in infancy, reaching full pathology during maiden adolescent sexual development. While seductive and sexually driven as other Asari, Ardat Yakshi are congenitally sterile. Ancient Asari mythology held Ardat Yakshi as gods of destruction, depicting them as villains of countless legends and as the anti-heroes of numerous Asari epics. Contrary to popular belief, Ardat Yakshi are neither extremely rare, around 1% of Asari dwell on the AUI spectrum, nor are they all murderers. Well, I thought there were three in existence, but not, I mean, currently in existence, I guess. Most cultivate and discard countless exploitative or abusive relationships during their legally marginal lives. Despite rumors of Ardat Yakshi syndicates, by nature, Ardat Yakshi are incapable of long-term cooperation. As a disproportionately wealthy species, Asari employ their economic reach and media ownership to hide the AY pathology from the galactic community, placing most Ardat Yakshi in monitored work programs or seclusion. Only the most aggressive cases are sentenced to sanitaria and prisons, or to the execution lists of Justicars. Right, so Samara basically became a... Yeah, she became a Justicar to kill her own daughter. I'm not gonna bother anybody else, not even the other Justicars with this. I'm just gonna do it myself and solve this problem. Ah, <sighs> another family problem. Asari Cyclonic Barrier Technology, CBT, attempts to solve the higher-end limitations of traditional kinetic barriers. Traditional barriers cannot block high-level kinetic energy such as disruptor torpedoes because torpedo mass effect fields add mass. The CBT violently slaps aside rather than halting incoming linear force. By rotationally firing their mass effect field projectors, ships create rapidly oscillating kinetic barriers instead of static ones. Shooting through the CBT is like trying to shoot at a target inside a spinning ball. Significant drawbacks to current CBT configuration prevent its use on anything other than frigates and fighters. Its many high-frequency sensors and emitters require frequent maintenance and replacement. A partially damaged CBT can endanger its operator, who is surrounded by rotating mass effect fields skewing in unpredictable directions. However, if an emitter is damaged, the CBT becomes a traditional shield array making it effective during opening volleys. Last time, the first Normandy died in like one second. So hopefully, now that we have upgraded some of our ship, it's not gonna... We're gonna be able to last two shots at the minimum, right? Hopefully. Hey Miranda, do you want to talk and say other things now, finally? Thanks again, Shepard. Taking the time to help me with my sister. I couldn't have reached Ariana in time without your help. I'm glad Niket tried to redeem himself, for what good it did. 
Thank you for stopping me, Commander. Hmm. Are you happy about your sister's relocation? She has what I wanted her to have. A normal life, and the freedom to choose her own path. And she knows she has an older sister. A friend. Are you gonna talk to her again? I honestly don't know. For once, I haven't planned that far ahead. I'll deal with it after our mission. I have to stay focused, and she needs time to adjust to her new home. You never told me what you talked about. I introduced myself. Her family was shocked. She adjusted quickly, of course. She's as smart as I am. She <laughs> plays the violin, loves the adagio movement of Nielsen's fifth, just like I do. She wants to work in colony development. Told a joke about it. She's really funny, something we don't share. A little bit for the nature versus nurture debate, huh? Because Miranda should theoretically know exactly how her sister would think, but she doesn't. And they're not exactly the same, because you're both human. Let me know if I can do anything else. I think I got it from here. My father has no chance at finding her family in their new location. For now. But thank you, Commander. My sister is safe again thanks in large part to you. I won't forget that. <sighs> if your dad's that powerful though, I worry that this is just a temporary solution. Uh, do you want to talk about you liking the cat? Commander, <laughs> what can I do for you? No, that one's just gone now. Oh well. Anything I should know regarding the Normandy? The crew's working well, and the ship appears to be performing to specifications. Mm, I don't think Miranda will tell me about how the ship really is doing. Do you have a minute, Miranda? There's a lot to do, Shepard. Maybe another time. Okay. I'll let you work. Of course, Commander. So we have a reason to go back to Omega. We have a reason to go back to the Citadel. Multiple missions from everybody. Yeah, okay, well, I think now we just be to go back to the galaxy map and pick the next one. Nobody will talk to me unless if I do their mission first, so I feel like we should continue doing people's missions, maybe even before going too much planet scanning. Because I want to talk to people, it's been a long time. Uh, Liara? Yeah, like I said, I'm gonna leave that for later, and maybe let's, let's talk to some people first, you know? Oh, mass relay. The mass relay's here. Who should we help today? Who is the closest one to us? Destroy blood pack base. Okay, this is the side quest. Help Tali. Help Samara and Omega. Save crashing ship. That is... Is that a side quest? Help Jacob. Uh, help Jack. Jack's is so far. Citadel. Help Thane. Garrus. Kasumi. Tuchanka? We haven't been to Tuchanka at all. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think this is what the star charts added. Like, I think it added some new places that we can go to. I didn't see any maps in my captain's cabin. Let's go to Tuchanka. We'll clear this place at the minimum. Rum. The smaller of the Aralox hydrogen helium gas giants. Mm hmm. It's not an efficient place to export. Visitors come here to top off their fuel tanks. The Council Demilitarization Enforcement Mission, CDEM, maintains a token garrison to monitor any potential sale of fuel to known enemies. Population 1000. Ah, DMZ. The place that. This is, it said Krogan DMZ. It's something, demilitarization zone. That's exactly what it stands for, right? So there's, this is kind of Krogan home space. Oh, it's so small, Durak. Small heat blasted rock, lost in the blinding glare of the star Aralok. It's got a powerful solar wind. There's some valuable metals here, which were sporadically mined by Krogan at the height of the power. But during the closing years of the rebellions, the five clans working the planetoid fell to fighting over a particularly rich deposit of iridium. And all five clan warlords agreed to a crush, which is a meeting at a neutral location, to negotiate a truce. Except they all planned on coming here, not to negotiate, but to kill everybody else. And when everybody met, everyone died. 
because of a simultaneous hypervelocity cannon strike. Yeah. Left with only food, water, and air in their hard suits, they fought each other to the death. And the survivors of the clans, the five clans, still argue about who really won, even though every single one of them died. Wow! It's hardcore. The Krogans don't just fight other people, they fight themselves too. Maybe themselves the most out of everybody. Because everyone's convenient and close by. Cannon! There is a impact crater 700 kilometers in diameter, dubbed the Rankat Basin. It was mined for light metals during the during the period between the Rachni War and the Krogan Rebellions. Probe away. But on average, doesn't seem like there's too much stuff in this place. So we know that Rex is on Tuchanka somewhere too, even though it's not part of anyone's missions here. Krubin, another Venusian hothouse. The first group of Krogan brought into orbit by the Salarian Uplift teams requested a trip to Krubin. The Salarians at first thought the Krogan were confused about the nature of Krubin's environment, the hotness. Oh, the planet is named for a Krogan mythological paradise in which honorable warriors feast on the internal organs of their enemies. In fact, Krogan astronomers had correctly deduced the nature of Krubin in the years before the global holocaust. In the two millenniums since, Krubin had come to become thought of as the ideal test of one's toughness. Every year, a few Krogan attempt to land on Krubin and exit their ships naked in an attempt to prove their Kroganhood. The planet's surface is littered with the crushed, corroded remains of their ships. Only one, Shath Norda, is known to have returned from the surface alive, albeit with bones crushed and all four lungs damaged by sulfuric gas. Norda recovered from his trial to the adulation of his people until he died in 1943. He was able to lie with any fertile female he wished. <laughs> wow. Oh my god, 700 degrees here! That's that's insane even by hot standards. Probe away. And yes, of course, the Krogan being all about combat and proving their toughness and whatnot, think that this place is the prime location to prove how awesome they are. Tuchanka, do we want to help Grunt or Morden? Maybe it depends on what we see first. Scarred by bombardment craters, radioactive rubble, choking ash, salt flats, and alkaline seas, Tuchanka can barely support life. Thousands of years ago, life grew in fierce abundance under the F-class star Aralank, a rake clan word meaning Eye of Wrath. Tree analogs grew in thick jungles. <laughs> Tree analogs? What does that even mean? Their roots growing out of shallow, silty seas. Life fed upon life in an evolutionary crucible. This world died in nuclear firestorms after the Krogan split the atom. A little ice age of nuclear winter killed off much of the remaining plant life. In recent centuries, many Krogan have returned to their homeworld. The reduced albedo has caused global temperatures to rise. In order to maintain livable temperatures, a vast shroud was assembled at the L1 Lagrange point. It is maintained by the Council Demilitarization Enforcement Mission CDEM, which is based on orbiting battle stations. CDEM Advisory Visitors to Tuchanka land at their own risk. The CDEM will not attempt to extract citizens threatened by clan warfare. Travel Advisory The ecology of Tuchanka is deadly. Nearly every native species engages in some predatory behavior. Even the remaining vegetation is carnivorous. Oh my god. Travel beyond guarded areas is strongly discouraged. But there's 2.1 billion people here! Capital Erdnot Erdnot Rex the Erd That same Erdnot, right? Yeah. Not too hot. Atmospheric pressure, pretty nice. Well, loyal. I guess we'll bring Morden and Grunt then. I wouldn't mind bringing them to each other's missions either because a Salarian could definitely learn more about Krogans and Krogans... Well, do Krogans want to know more about Salarians? Maybe, because we're on Tuchanka right now. Three. I'm still stuck with Infernal Grenade here. I'm going to store up the three for the moment. Can we even get to full bars for everything? I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. Grunt. Concussive shot, incendiary ammo, concussive shot. Fortification. Heavy concussive shot. Massive blast propelling enemies with bone crushing force. Concussive blast. High energy explosive charges give your shot an impact radius large enough to knock down multiple enemies. So this has a higher force 
This has damage. And then, oh, no, no, this has an impact radius. So this is multiple enemies, this is one guy. Multiple enemies? A Krogan being able to deal with multiple enemies? Because Grunt charges up to people often. I feel like that would probably be pretty good. Geth Pulse Rifle. Yup. Anything I can use here? <laughs> I'm scared to try the, the cane again. It seems a little bit scary. Um, Avalanche. We've tried all these ones already, right? Except for maybe the grenade launcher. That was the very first one that we got. Sure. It's not exactly gonna be Ilium 2.0 here. Grunt, have you been feeling okay? Tuchanka! Krogan Homeworld. Freedom's. Hold on, hold on. The, the Krogan Homeworld boasts extreme temperatures, virulent diseases, and vicious predatory fauna. Around 1900 BCE, the Krogan discovered atomic power and promptly instigated many intraplanetary wars, sending Tuchanka into a nuclear winter. With most of their industrial base destroyed, the Krogan entered a new dark age, and warring tribal bands dominated. Populations remained low for the next 2,000 years. First contact with the Salarians made resurgence possible. Krogan brought to less hostile planets bred exponentially and returned to reconquer their home. They built vast underground shelters to shield themselves from surface radiation, which proved prescient during the Krogan rebellions when many of them isolated themselves in a vain attempt to avoid the genophage. Convinced they could outbreed the genophage, they transmitted it into more than 90% of the sealed bunkers. Oh no! Today, population is sharply limited. And while individual Krogan are long-lived, the genophage ensures few replacements. Mm, I'm not sure if it's correct to think about it like this, but if you think about maybe a civilization, like um, the process of evolution of a civilization, you start with nature and not many like technological advances, and then you move into like the industrial age and then technological age and all that. So the Salarians, humans, Asari, definitely get a bigger impression that they're moving to, oh, you know, building a civilization with proper technology and shops and law and order. But the Krogan are still kind of living in this more tribal stage where they're mostly clan-based. Although, I, again, I don't know if that's like, you know, is that implying that this is uh, definitively, what would you say it, less evolved than everyone else? Or is it just the way they like to live? Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, it's a blood pack recruiter. <laughs> Oh god, it's all- it's all Krogan's here. Oh, Char! Hey! What did I tell you, honey? Isn't it beautiful? Far away from all that high-tech noise. I guess. Seems a bit dirty, though. Oh, it builds character. Okay, they do have some technology here, but, I mean, look at all the rubble. It's not exactly pristine like Ilium. Is it just me, or do the other Krogan not like me? Oh, there's some concern about me bringing in a non-Krogan. I had to talk to the chief a little. It's not a deal. Wait, so they don't even want me here? Who cares what they want? I want you. That's all that matters. I feel like Tuchanka is very dangerous for an Asari, though, because wouldn't everybody be thinking, Hey, look, an Asari that we can actually reproduce with, without having to care about the genophage. I can do this, Char. Hey, now. My blue rose of Ilium always stands strong to reach toward the sun. Okay, I'll manage. Just no more poetry. What did I tell you, honey? Isn't it beautiful? Far away I don't know, man. This place seems... Human. Okay. You don't know my friend? My friend? 
His first name is Erdnot. You better watch your back. <laughs> if you're looking for work, you're shouting down the wrong hole. The Blood Pack only recruits Krogan. You again. I told you the Blood Pack only wants Krogan. Go flash your smooth skin somewhere else. I thought coming to Tachanka would get me away from jaw-flapping aliens. I was obviously mistaken. If you're looking for work, you're shouting down the wrong hole. The Blood A Pack Varen. only recruits Krogan. Yeah, Varen are pets of Krogan. Hi. Whoa. I have a Krogan with me. The clan leader wants to speak with you. Keep your running pet on a short leash. Get him the right soon or put him down. <gasps> the right. You know what's wrong with him. What he needs? There's nothing wrong with him. Just go speak to the clan leader. It's Krogan puberty. A lot of clans, I guess because there's so much information about everybody and there's so many different species here, hard to know everything about everybody. It's not even like a Google search away. We just don't know what's wrong with Grunt, but to the Krogans, it's like, oh yeah, you know, he just needs the right. That's all he needs. Take your business to the clan leader and keep your running pet on a short leash. Get him the right soon or put him down. Do you know who he is? He's the strongest Krogan warrior around, so I'd watch my mouth if I were you. You know what's wrong with him. There's what nothing wrong with him. Just go speak. Okay. Just like how the Asari try to hide about the Ardak Yachi. Someday we'll get off this rock and show those Turians who's boss. Damn Tear right. Tear the scales <laughs> off and let the Pijaks feast on the while they're still alive. Ah, ah, the Pijaks. That's what the little monkeys were called. Pijaks. I remembered... Um, back in Mass Effect 1, it's probably in the codex somewhere here too, but they mentioned that the internet, the quote-unquote internet, works a little bit differently than how it works here. The clan reports use weak encryption. I see references to a captured Solarian in the logs of the Chief Scout. Good. Talk to Scout then. Or Chief. Either one acceptable. Also, I have been unable to access local medical records. I suggest asking the local clan leader for assistance with Grunt's problem. Yeah, I remember the Codex mentioned the internet, like the database of knowledge. Uh, when someone colonizes a new planet, there is a set amount of records they bring with them. But then, if anybody wants to search for something new, it's gotta like go through a few pathways to find somebody who actually has that information before they can bring it back to the database of that planet. So, I imagine Google searching doesn't work very well if your place doesn't normally have a lot of Krogan problems. But on Tuchanka, it should work pretty well. Oh, there's a pie jack. <laughs> you guys don't even use chairs or- Were you around when the female camp sent the children over last week? No, I was off dealing with a Varen attack. What, any promising warriors? Yes, of course, they're strong. One day they will tear our enemies apart. The judging by the Krogans' reaction to... Um, to Grunt? Oh, Grunt is a little bit smaller. Children, probably five years from the right. Yeah, my eyes, I think. <gasps> think you actually had a fertile female on one of your trips to their camp? I... I must have. A son? Good for you. We'll get a ring call to celebrate. The right has to do with baby- it, it is- it is Krogan puberty, basically. That's what it sounds like. No more? I forgot, you could go back and like, you know, eavesdrop a little bit more. Hold on. There were the people back here. Uh, I was gonna say that, you know, how we know that Grunt is basically like a super soldier. They don't notice that though. The Krogans here don't really know that, so it's not like Immediately when Grunt walks in the room, people know. It's nothing like that. And the Solarians, too. Those little bastards think they're so smart. Needed us to fight the Rachni, though, didn't they? Couldn't take us in a fair fight. Had to use diseases. That's a gutless way to win. <laughs> well, they won. I wonder what those Turians and Solarians look like up close. Nobody around here but more Krogan. 
fun to kill someone else for a change. A good fight's a good fight. Doesn't matter who it's against. Yeah, I guess you're right. Don't want to tear off some Turian scales, though. <laughs> Someday. Good thing I didn't bring Garrus here. Bit of a rude conversation, don't you think? But it is your home planet. It's not even your home system, it's your actual home planet. We cool? Like you don't you don't have any more? Someday you will get off this rock and show those Turians who's boss. Okay. You guys could clean up a little bit. It's kind of hard to walk around here. A child. My son. We played tackle the Baron. It was... It was good. Fast. Strong. Well, of course he was. Any son of yours must be. Then they went back to the female camp. He was so fast. I didn't get to talk with him. The female camp. I'm talking to the Varen. Ah. Uh, maybe let's ask his owner first. Stay. Greetings, human. My name is Ratch. Have a look at what I've got. Everyone I talk to hates that aliens are an nerd not except you. I don't have the luxury of turning away paying customers. I do enough business off-world to know that you aliens have more credits than people here do. So if you did have enough business, would you be telling me to go away? What do you have in stock? Most of it's food and drink that's toxic to humans. Great. Rin calls a local favorite. Don't try to act tough, it'll tear your insides apart. He's not joking. Rin call hits aliens like ground glass. Otherwise, I've got weapons, scrap, and whatever food those pie jocks don't steal, which isn't much. Take a look at my kiosk over there if you want to buy something. What the hell is a pie jack? Off-world vermin. Humans say they're like monkeys. They come in and steal food, ring call, whatever they can get their talons on. We started using the mounted defense cannons to stop them. Oh my god. It's just a monkey. I'm a good shot. Maybe I can help out with the pie jacks. Feel free. You can use the console out there to control the guns. Make a dent in the pie jack population, and you get a discount. Good luck with that. You gonna go kill monkeys, Shepard? I should go. Suit yourself. What? What do you have to sell anyway? Oh, heavy weapon ammo. We definitely want that. And a whole bunch of <gasps> death mask. Negotiation bonus. What is that even? Like discounts? Bigger discounts? Hey, maybe we should buy a new pistol. It's been a while since we have a new gun. But first, we want to try using the cannons. Oh my god. Uh. Oh, okay. Oh. Stay. I thought I was gonna bite my hand off. It didn't even let me see the. The actual animation. Should I ask the female clan for right of parentage? Why bother with all the politics? You know you've sired a son. That's enough. But I could teach him to hunt. The, the best way to shoot a gun. To, to fight with honor and savagery. Eh, you can do that next time they bring the children over. It's not the same. Ah, uh, Krogan females, uh, if I remember right, weren't they pretty highly regarded? Because of the disparity in, like, females and males, I guess. Actually, I've never seen a female Krogan any at, at the moment. Mm, they don't really operate like, you know, one, one male Krogan, one female Krogan, or like, you know, small, typical nuclear families, because I guess reproduction is such a priority here. This is the great Krogan homeworld. This is the land of Kredok, Shiagar, and Viol. This chunk of rock is barely worth standing on. Never thought I'd miss the tank. Shh, shh. Don't insult your friends. Pit fight gambling station. Put down some real money, human. 
White Blue Hope, the White Blue Varen, or Red Brown Thunder, the Red Brown Varen. Bet 250. Oh my god. Come on, White Blue Varen! Oh! What? Okay, well, great. Put down some real money, human. No, come on, White Blue Hope, you can do it! You can do it! Is it the same one or a different one? What? Come on! Come on! Put down some real money, human. Come on, White Blue Hope! Yeah! Yeah! I <laughs> just caught back a little bit. Lost a bit overall. Watch it, human. I think I've had enough. Oh. What do you want, human? Rex told me to be polite. He didn't say you were going to talk to me. <laughs> you spoiled the surprise. I didn't talk to Rex yet. <laughs> uh, hold on, hold on. Talk to you later. Hold on. Look at him run. Ha! <laughs> Kill for Ratch. How? Shoot the pie jacks. Where are the pie jacks? Oh, jeez. Oh, no, they've taken food. It takes a while for the missile to come out. This is awful. This is awful. Oh god, oh god. I don't have to be super precise. This is so mean though, what in the... Oh my gosh, no! Wave completed, there's more, oh no. They don't ever really group up enough for me to get multiple in one missile. Not that I'd want that to happen, okay? Just <laughs> make it easy for me. Oh my gosh. You like the Varen, you keep the Varen as pets, but not the Pijack, because they have no redeeming factors, apparently. Hey, we have a gigantic horizontal missile. Is that like something... Is that a special one? Oh! Two in one! Oh my god, come on! Are we looking at... We've, we're gonna have killed like 60 Pijacks by the end of this. This is awful. Even back in Mass Effect 1, I... I don't think I killed anybody with a Mako or... I think I killed like one Deer Guru accidentally. But not never on purpose, not like this. This is just... This is genocide. They must reproduce a lot. <laughs> Maybe not as much as the Krogan back in the day, though. Oh! And there's Pijaks here, too. Are these guys spacefaring? I just don't know how you're getting off the planet. Okay. Um. I'll be back. I straight ahead. Let's talk to. Hold on. I just wish. Things could be different. We could live together, us, the women, the children. You know we can't. We'd just be one big, weak target. Have to keep the fertile females safe, the children safe. Damn the genophage. I think I'll take you up on that ring hole later. The kids and the women and the men live apart. I lost half my stock in a bed on the pits, and it was the good half. Aww. Seeing those vermin roasting in the heat from an explosive shell. I swear it was glorious. 
It was a lot of fun. Help yourself to more. There's no shortage of pie jocks out there if you get a craving for violence. I'll give you a discount at my store. Anything you want, you buy at cost. This is why you're not making enough money. I should go. Suit yourself. At cost? Give yourself a little bit of a margin. My goodness. <gasps> <laughs> Fresh raw hijack meat is a favorite of Baron everywhere. Okay. Uh, sure. Why can't I buy this? Oh, I don't even have money. <gasps> I don't have money. Well, thankfully, this is not the most important one anyway. It's just heavy weapon ammo capacity. I'd rather buy the gun, actually, just to have a different one that we can try out. But yeah, nothing that's super crazy here. Except for heavy weapon ammo. I do want it, but I can't really afford it, so we'll... We'll see.